So first I would like to say that we uh, have to rethink really about the role of the university. Um, it is, the role of the university is to educate people to solve the problems of tomorrow and for the future. And that is why we can't educate students, today's students, uh, with methods and uh, materials from yesterday for a future we don't know so much about. So open education resources, OERs and MOOCs, are very, very strong facilitators and catalysts for um, both for learners but also for academics to be updated in a changing environment. And likewise uh, is the use of social media, which I think uh, goes very, very well along with uh, OERs and MOOCs, as um, connected people and teachers are learners and learners they are always updated and thus they are in the same speed as the, the knowledge and the research is developing. So with um, open education resources and the MOOCs, uh, learners can that get the use of the best researchers and the knowledge around the globe and to be in contact with the, with the best researchers and academics wherever they are. And the two are are where one can use, adapt, remix, and even sell resources or materials. <coughs> one can contextualize it to their own uh, context and their own uh, environment. And that is uh, um, very, very useful because uh, it used to be said that the only thing which we have little of is time. And all teachers and academics uh, would like to have uh, time with each other. And that is why using OER and MOOCs, we don't need to repeat and to reinvent the wheel all the time, as we can take use of what others have been done before us and to build about, uh, upon that. In that way, we can also um, have deeper learning and to have really more face-to-face uh, -face learning and contact with, with the learners and the academics. And that is also what is very much facilitated when we are talking about quality in open online learning. And many institutions who have used that already, they are really confirming that they have deeper learning and deeper contact with the students. Uh, of course, there are many business models, both for OERs and for MOOCs. So it depends how you use it. We all know that we, MOOCs and OERs are used for marketing, for branding, uh, for recruitment of uh, students. But it's very much used for uh, continuous professional development and that is more and more used for that, I will say. And as I said earlier, connected people and updated people are always up to date. But most of all, um, using OERs and MOOCs, uh, the quality of open online learning can enhance because you're always taking use of the recent research within the areas. But also we don't have to forget forg that uh, using OERs and MOOCs is also for the joy of learning and for the passion of learning. But the most thing is that we can uh, blend uh, formal and informal learning as this goes more and more hand in hand. It's very difficult to separate it. But also there is a lot of uh, fruitful collaboration. Uh, academics who are using ORs and MOOCs and also the learners are connected with people around the world and come in closer contact with their personal learning uh, networks. But maybe the most important uh, is that um, using um, OERs and MOOCs is that uh, what is already paid by tax, taxes have to go back to the people who are paying the taxes so people can, can get use of it. Uh, I will also stress that um, with the, the use of open education resources and MOOCs, they are very well hand in hand with the UNESCO goals for education for 2030. And that is about access, uh, equity, quality and lifelong learning. And we have to rethink uh, very much what institutions are doing as we have to educate uh, students and people for the future. <laughs>